If you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder, there is help. Call the Alliance for Eating Disorders Awareness Hotline at 1-866-662-1235 or go on their website for resources or to talk to a therapist at www.allianceforeatingdisorders.com. Remember, you are loved and you are wanted and you're perfect the way you are, regardless of shape or size. Sorry, I'm not trying to give away the twist. I just, I think if I'm covering episodes with intense or triggering topics, I should make sure to provide my viewers with resources, just in case. Exercises everywhere. See those kids? Potential barbells. Now rock me to Hundy. <laughs> Shut up and help me count. Wow, I can't believe it's been a whole year since I've seen you guys. Kitty, it's been less than a week. Cut the crap. Oh yeah. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk and I'm here to talk to you about American Dad. Or more specifically, Stan Smith. The one American Dad character I've been dying to make a video on. Well, besides Haley, but I cannot think of a good topic for her. Like Stan, she might get her own episode. I don't know. Stan was kind of similar. I fought for the longest time to make a video about whether or not he's a good father, but that seems like it would work better as a subscriber special. And speaking of, thanks for allowing me to start reviewing episodes. These types of videos are fun to make, they're nice practice, and I can always rely on them when I'm in a pinch. Now, American Dad is known for a lot of things, among them, their twists. As I previously said, with Dreaming of a White Porsche Christmas, not every twist is perfect, but 8 times out of 10, they can be pretty intense or interesting. And this isn't something they developed over time. The earlier seasons had a lot of twists, be it the reveal with the goo, the truth about Anne Fleming, the ladybugs, Star Trek. However, this is probably my absolute favorite twist. I guess it's because they were able to take a serious issue and the double standards that go along with it and make a meaningful episode with jokes on top of it. In a way, it feels like a South Park episode with a tinge of Family Guy flavor. So let's discuss. One morning, Steve is being chased by some bullies and a- Where do those dogs come from? Dog of all things. Looks like Smith weaseled out of gym class again, Dad. I told you, here at school you call me Coach Dipwad. They care that much if you ditch gym class? My senior year, the teacher said if we did not want to do gym, who cares? Our grade was basically attendance. He did not care if we just sat off to the side. I got so much homework done. Steve hides in the fence, as that is totally 100% possible. Damn you die hard. And he meets a golf girl named Debbie. Ah, you ditching gym class too? Today is track. I hate running. Then we're on the same page. Who? Hmm. I guess she looks like Henrietta's more Britney wannabe sister. <sighs> Come on, you know I need to make jokes about this chick. She's such a mean girl. And the musical made her worse. Even if all goths aren't mean girls, I mean, Lydia Dietz is kind of nice. I wear my hair just like her. And she inspired me to wear paper clips as barrettes. And Michael from South Park is willing to talk to non-conformists like Stan. Still, Debbie seems like your typical goth. Look at them scurrying around like ants. Go ahead. Exercise all you want. You'll never escape the smoky death of time's magnifying glass. Debbie, stop sounding like my intrusive thoughts. Still, her and Steve managed to make a connection. Life is a banquet, and death is dessert. I love dessert! Steve, I thought your favorite food was mac and cheese omelets. Don't just lie to get in good with a girl, Steve, even if she is goth. At home, Roger is busy dealing with his Mr. Belvedere chat group. I promised my Mr. Belvedere chat group I'd post a summary of this episode by six. Those losers are pretty punctual. Even if I'm pretty sure that show stopped airing new episodes by the time this episode came out. So who's he writing for? Reddit? Speaking of, apparently somebody made me a subreddit, so whoever you are, thank you. Steve goes home and happily tells everybody about Debbie. And she likes reading old books by guys who died of syphilis. 
Syphilis! Ooh la la! I know, Francine. Luna has that. Although the pilot isn't canon anymore, and I don't think she was being serious anyway, so who cares? Stan, for once in his life, is actually proud of his own son. So, what's this Debbie's affiliation? She's more of an artist. She played Lady Macbeth in our school production of Oklahoma. So she's an actress! Had a boy! What can she say? She's just a girl who can't say no. Lady Macbeth could and say it, no matter how many times she tried to rinse out that damn it spot and look at her. However, I want you to notice something. See how Stan is constantly thinking of Debbie in terms of her looks? Or the fact that she's popular? Not if she's right for Steve or a good person. This is important. And this girl actually wants to spend time with you. For your information, she said she thinks I'm cute. Yeah, it's true, Steve. You're kind of a creep and a weirdo. What the hell are you doing here? You don't belong here, but I'm already writing a video all about that. We can't wait to meet her, Steve. You can say that again. Okay. We can't wait to meet her, Steve. What? That's what you wanted, right? It'll be nice to have a pretty girl around the house for a change. I, I meant a, a pretty younger girl. Don't get mad at me, it's called makeup. Stan, some of us, including me, hate wearing makeup. Like, nowadays, it's so weird to see some people practically drown themselves in mascara and foundation just to go grocery shopping. I hate doing it. It makes me feel like a party clown. Like, my face is, like, all constricted. Ugh. Plus, my avatar is a cat. Imagine trying to wash all that crap out. Does that make me ugly, Stan? Hmm? Don't answer that. But once again, this is quite important to show Stan's opinion on the appearance side. To him, you're only worth being around if you're attractive. You're just drones who work for him, then die. In fact, a later season episode had him outright say that the main reason he married Francine was because she was pretty. Just beautiful. That's the reason I married her. Well, that's not the only reason. Yes, it is. There was nothing else? Nope. Just my appearance. That is correct. However, Steve can't land Debbie in the bag as he is an anxious little apple. Understandable. I mean, look at his mother and the milk she puts in his cereal. Why is it so chunky? So to motivate Steve, Stan gives him an Invader Zim level hall pass. If you leave school grounds, it will explode. Whoops, accidentally set it for 24 minutes. Oh man, you better run! Oh, curd. You know, I was gonna say crud, but I made a spelling mistake, and I was like, you know what? We're keeping this. Eventually, Steve successfully gets Debbie to go out with him, and they're now a couple! They even get to go to Debbie's favorite hangout spot. It sucks we put our dead in the earth where we can't watch them decompose. Would you be interested in buying the table owned by Robbie's parents from Gravity Falls? Putrefaction is simply a community of necrophores that engorge the carry-on with sulfur dioxide gas. All this talk of death is making me cremate. Uh, I don't know what any of that means, but cremate, that is one of my favorite words. I'm not even joking. I, just, I like how it sounds. It makes me think of creme brulee, like that one dish where it's like marshmallows and then like a blowtorch or something. Eventually, Steve works up the courage to invite Debbie over for dinner in order to meet his family. Before she arrives, Stan gives Steve his blessing. What a wedding it will be. And a touching speech in which I reminisce about the time I dropped you on your head as an infant. And then someone in the crowd yells out, that explains a lot, and we all share a laugh. Uh, okay then. Eventually, Debbie comes over and Stan, well... No, Dad, that's... Is the fat girl going to lead us to Debbie? No, that's... She's carrying a purse. She must have a map to Debbie in her purse. Dad, that's Debbie! Stan panics at the thought that... Oh, the Oh my goodness, overweight people exist. I mean, to him, people like Shrek and A.D. Brian, they must be the stuff of legends, as we get no comedy out of the fact that they're overweight. Body positivity, how awful. He forces the family into the panic room, where he continues to insult Debbie behind her back. Our son is dating a fatty! Dad, that's awful! Plus-size women drive our economy with their purchases of Garfield books and haagen -Dazs. Wait, but I'm plus size and I don't like either of those things. But I guess I stimulate the economy with my purchases of shirt dresses and oatmeal. It's good for weight loss and it's easy to make. So, what are we panicking about? Is there another new Pope? Damn it, Roger, lock the door! Well, actually, Roger, there is a new The Pope. <laughs> 
cool, Stan hates Debbie, Roger is enchanted by her. My stars, who is that enchanting Rubenesque vision? <gasps> She's like a female Mr. Belvedere. Eh, I would maybe rant about this, but this was season two or three, Roger, depending on where you're watching the episode. Here, it's pretty much just puppy love. He won't cut off pieces of Debbie and put her in a jar like he did with Dylan. Stan refuses to allow Steve and Debbie to be together. And this is the Snickers that broke the camel's back. They're right, Stan. You've let yourself go. Good. God, it's true! I've become one of them! Ah! It's okay, Stan. Join us. You get to know all of the McDonald's staff by name. And you have so many points in the McDonald's app that practically every order you have is free. You brought fat into our house! You'd like Debbie if you got to know her, Dad. There's a lot more to her than you think. There's more of her? Well, to be fair, Stan, I don't think you're fat the way you think you are. As in, morbidly obese. You just have a gut. And that's fine. Wait, <gasps> are you like me? Are you pregnant with ideas? Because the family pointed out Stan's hypocrisy, Stan believes that he must diet himself until he loses the weight. God, look at me. I'm hideous. Stan, you've been working out for three weeks. You look great. Great as in great big fatso. Which, okay. It's always a good thing to be on top of your health. Only this is Stan. And his methods are, let's just say... Stop it! You're not fat! Now come on, I made your favorite pot roast. Get that away from me! Die, calories, die! At least his diet won't crash and burn. Plus, it seems as though Stan is getting more and more overweight the more he diets, which in a way I hear is apparently normal at first. I don't know how true this is, but I remember hearing that when you stop eating, you actually gain weight first because your body starts using up all the fat reserves. Really? How true is this? I'm just curious. Now, as somebody who is overweight, in the sense of like Collihawk or Panderverse Cartman, and as this is is an episode about eating, I feel like there are some double standards at play. If you're overweight and you have, say, anorexia, it's like nobody cares that you're suffering. You're fat already. At least it's good you're losing weight. At least you are in eating. Even if it's still massively unhealthy, still a disorder, and it can lead to some serious complications. And even if you do manage to lose the weight through actually healthy means, people think it's okay to start to comment about you. Wow, you look so much better this way. See, it's easy not to look like a pig. Guys, it's just another form of fat shaming. What I like is how the family doesn't care that Stan himself is overweight, because after all, he really isn't that overweight, and I think that's part of the point. They just care that he's doing all of this unhealthy crap, or that he's insulting Debbie and continuing to do so. Where's Steve? Still caught in Debbie's gravitational pull? That's so unfair, Dad. Overweight people have it hard enough being disgusting without you making fun of them. At one point, Klaus is even like, Dude, stop it, you're freaking me out. They never make fun of him. I know the episode probably did not intend for this, but it's still pretty nice, so thank you. However, it seems as though the family is the reason that Stan is gaining all of this weight. Especially Haley and Francine. Hand me the syringe of lard. This'll fatten him up. Such a hilly thing to do. Stan continues to diet until he makes the acquaintance of a personal trainer named Zack. Name's Zack. I'm a personal trainer. I wear a trucker cap, and I can mold you into a dude who won't send the ladies puking. I'll do anything to look like you. When can we start? Keep this in mind. While this is going on, Steve and Debbie are flourishing as a couple, and Roger is flourishing as a voyeur. Debbie... That should be me handling your folds and squeezing your exquisite back fat. But you don't know you're cheating on me yet, so I forgive you. <sighs> season 2 and or 3 Roger Justification Kitty. Yes, Season 2 and or 3 Roger Justification. Even if he does this exact thing and 10 times worse when he starts crushing on Haley. Stan continues to exercise, but once again, he isn't seeing any results. So start over, Jumpy Tiny. Z-Man! How'd you find where I live? Yeah, good question. 
Now let's rock it up a bump, Chunky Brewster! Off topic, but the actress who played Punky Brewster, Soleil Moonfry, had gigantomastia, a condition where your breasts grow to huge, massive size. Unhealthy, not like a good thing. It's not a good thing to have that. As she was still in high school when she started suffering, the other kids would bully her and call her Chunky Boopster. Ugh, kids are cruel. She eventually had to get a breast reduction before she turned 16. Sorry, I know it has nothing to do with anything, I just like to insert fun facts. Or not so fun facts in this case. Zack starts to believe that perhaps Stan's family is to blame for the weight. You. What are you talking about? You said they were all farted at you for dissing your son's fat girlfriend? What? They... They want me to get fat like that girl, so I'll apologize to Steve. Hells yeah! I think they wanted to do that when they pointed out your gut. Why would they keep doing that? Still, to Stan, it seems like they're continuing to do this. No, put it over here. Come on, it's mine, it's mine, Mom. Just do it, go. Hey, where's Zach? Why isn't he inside mouthing off to you two? What are you doing to my celery? Nothing! We're just freezing our... Tampons. What? That seems like it would hurt or lead to toxic shock syndrome. Guys, come on. Jim Henson died from that. And Francine, you had that once. Remember the prom episode? Unfortunately, she didn't realize that her tampon had been in for two days, which led to a mild case of toxic shock. At a work physical, Stan collapses like a house of cards. Oh, look. Miss Pinkerton fainted at the market buying canned salmon for her. <laughs> Get up, Smith. Stan gets suspended for health reasons, and he goes to confront his family, where they tell him... You do have a weight problem! I think you're anorexic. You keep thinking you're fat no matter how skinny you get! What? Look at me! <gasps> it's worse than we thought! I know! I'm a huge tub of lard! Oh, sh... Stan, please get help right now. Please, for your own good, please. If you're this dysmorphic, imagine how your heart must feel. So, this is the twist. Stan was so upset that he was overweight that it led to him developing a complex about food. And that complex led to him dieting and exercising excessively until he developed anorexia nervosa and body dysmorphia. As for Zach, well, he was just a hallucination of Stan's inner insecurity. Securities. Bro, don't listen to them. Stan, there's no one there. Who are you talking to? Stan, what did we say about makeup? But I've heard that with some anorexics, they do indeed get hallucinations as a result of the malnutrition. Maybe they don't have sick, but they will see things that aren't there. And heck, the way Stan is picturing himself as being fat when he's basically a bag of bones, that's another form of hallucination. I don't have a weight problem. You can't make me go in there. You're sick and you need help and you're uncommonly strong i really like this twist i like how it was foreshadowed it was really good and once again as it talks about a serious topic i think this is why i like the episode stereotypically eating disorders especially anorexia are female disorders you need to be as skinny as possible to wear a bikini to the beach you need to be as skinny as possible or no man will ever want you even if eating disorders affect everybody regardless of gender there is still a huge stigma when it comes to men seeking help, and Stan himself fed into that. I mean, if Stan wanted to lose weight the healthy way, he could have gone to a dietitian or went to an actual gym and got a real trainer. After all, weight loss isn't a one-size-fits-all solution, pun not intended. Heck, when Stan is forced to go to a support group for anorexics and he's the only male patient there, the counselor doesn't take him seriously. Young lady. Now, now, I, I know in high school in the showers with the other girls, you feel uncomfortable with your body. I'm not in high school. When Wait, so why is it that showers and gym class are like, they give you no privacy? That seems illegal. Like, later. How did this happen? Well, when young girls like your father get this disease. Is it bad I like this joke? So it's nice for American Dad to acknowledge this is a thing, especially in the mid 2000s where if this aired anywhere else, especially Family Guy, the joke would be, ha ha, Stan thinks he's anorexic. Now, in most shows, once the eating disorder is revealed, the person suffering will be like, Thank you for your support. I am now.
now cured, which is not what happens in real life, sadly. For many people, it's an uphill battle. What I like is they don't save this big twist for the end of Act 3. We get to see the aftermath of Stan admitting the truth and how hard it is for him. We get to see the aftermath of Stan admitting the truth and how hard it is for him to stay healthy. I shouldn't be here, Veronica. Yeah, but your family will keep sending you back until they think you're getting better. But I don't want to eat. I hate food. First off, he doesn't think he has a problem. And when somebody suffering doesn't think they have a problem, they don't take stuff like therapy seriously. And while, yeah, they do make fun of anorexia a little bit, it's not in the sense of, ha ha, look at the anorexic. It's, oh no, he's anorexic. Well, I tell you, huh? Look at her. She's the picture of health. <sighs> so it's good to laugh at this episode, while paying attention to the message it's providing. Stan's therapist tells the family about his progress, and says that the way to help is to look at the root cause of his problem. And usually, when it comes to eating disorders, this problem comes out of changes at home. Which Steve thinks to mean... Has there been a change at home? A change at home? You brought fat into our house! <gasps> Which, I mean, in a way, I guess he's right, but really, it's not your fault, Steve. Stan befriends another patient in this group, Veronica. And I had a second Tic Tac. You can totally tell. Look at her massive Tic Tac thighs. <laughs> Is it gonna be like the fault in our stars? Oh wait, Stan's married. Is she gonna end up like Nat Wolf? Veronica teaches Stan all kinds of tips and tricks for him to keep up his diet, while seeming like he's getting better. That way, his family will stop trying to help him, but they're not gonna notice him looking like that, even after he supposedly gets better. Basically, Stan has to do sleight of hand with his food. Don't sweat it. I've got a few tricks I can teach you. That's been in there for days. To help his father, Steve tries to break up with Debbie, rather than just not talk about her in front of Stan until he starts to get better or stop bringing her around the house. I just don't think I can give you the time you need. Forget me, big beautiful creature. <laughs> Poor kid, he doesn't realize this is really for nothing. Good thing that Steve's loss is Roger's win, or so he thinks. <laughs> oh, whose foot is that? Paddington Bear, you randy bastard. <laughs> Is this a reference to E.T.? Or that one episode of It's Always Sunny where they break into a house? Stan starts to use his tricks to fool the family. Stan, you're eating so well. Let's just say I learned a lot from my new friend Veronica. And continues to rub salt into Steve's wound, like it's a flavorless piece of steak. And you'll be glad to know Debbie won't be around to upset you anymore. What do you mean, Steve? We... Went our separate ways! <laughs> Dang, Steve, no wonder Scott Grimes got a hernia from voicing you. Surprised he did not blow the mic out. Now, Stan needs a way to keep the family from noticing the food, because, you know, they all use the garbage. So he dumps it into the pool. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica, you fat- Keep this in mind. Wait, what was he gonna do when summer comes and they have to use the pool? Goodbye, Debbie. I'm getting rid of everything that reminds me of you and sealing it in this beautiful hope chest you made me. Again, it just, it hurts watching Steve suffer. And it's like Stan is making it worse. Like, I know he doesn't know he's doing it, but Stan, please stop. In a few weeks, I'll be a regular Debbie. <laughs> Steve, what's wrong? What about the word regular set you off? Here, have a little Debbie. <laughs> like, he doesn't care that his son broke up with his girlfriend or even bothered to ask, Son, why are you not with Debbie? You two were so happy together. He's just glad his own son is not dating somebody who is overweight. Come on, she's a cheerleader. And a real one, not one of those fat jobs whose mother has to sue to get them on the team. And this is an attitude Stan holds onto for a while. Once again, in shallow vows, when Francine realizes Stan only married her for appearance sake, she gains a bunch of weight in order to teach him a lesson. And later, the only way he can perform is either by having the CIA take his retinas out, and therefore blinding him, or by having Francine's driver's license posted on the ceiling. 
A hundred and nine. A hundred and nine what? Stan, you are such a hypocrite. Steve can't bring himself to tell his father why he broke up with Debbie. So Stan thinks he's doing Steve a solid by setting him up with Veronica. And as we all know, Stan is as good a matchmaker as the lady of the same name from Mulan. At dinner, Steve is both turned off by Veronica and likely also reminded of how his father was like that a few days ago. Split the olive, you have the radish, I'll have some of that decorative parsley, and we'll both suck on ice chips for dessert. Grand Granted, is it bad I like to eat ice chips? They are like so good. Unfortunately, Steve is gonna get more painful reminders. Roger has invited Debbie out to dinner. Hi, uh, reservations for two under Roger? Oh, sorry, Roger. And due to the magic of television coincidences, he just so happens to pick this one buffet. Of all the buffets, Steve's at this one? Well, it's not Steve's fault that Langley Falls is a small town with only one buffet and a sports stadium and a community college. Would you rather pick the buffet that Dr. Weitzman lives at? What a complex and exciting ecosystem this town has. I know, Francine. At home, Francine is taking the groceries inside when a bottle falls near the pool, which causes... <laughs> Oh crap, that is like one of my biggest fears. He never cleaned his plate. He just moved the food. He just moved the food. Why? Why? Is it weird for me to say this episode was my entry point into Poltergeist? Look up the story about the skeletons. Turns out that Roger has all of the charisma of a cockroach because he has not managed to charm the pants, or pantyhose, off of Debbie. Uh, I thought we were here so you could interview me. I am, I am. So question one, on a scale of zero to Lestat, how cute am I? What? Roger, I'm gonna say this the best way possible. You're Kai from Vampire Diaries. As in, you have a great personality and I love to hate you, but you suck. And you look more like a human version of that candle guy from Beauty and the Beast. Thereby meaning, you ain't got it, Roger. Of course, Debbie doesn't want to do anything, both because, like I said, he looks like Kai, and she's still upset about what happened with Steve. Look, my boyfriend and I just broke up, but I'm still kind of holding out hope that we'll get back together. Don't hold your breath, Debbie. This is where you belong. We found your food graveyard! <gasps> you haven't been getting better at all! What are all of these people doing here? This place is cursed! Damned! If anybody got that, you deserve a veteran's discount. Francine confronts Stan about his food graveyard, which must be a major health hazard. And now realizing that he did all of this for nothing, Steve finally stands up to his father, with a resentment that, much like Gumbo, has been slowly boiling over during this whole awful date. Guys, I can explain. I was lying to you. No sh- <laughs> Sherlock. Debbie was the best thing that ever happened to me, and you drove her away because of your stupid obsession with how people look and all you cared about was her appearance uh steve please say that again debbie was the best thing that ever happened to me and you drove her away because of your stupid obsession with how people look and all you cared about was her appearance Steve makes a grand, epic speech about body positivity, which I am all here for. And thankfully, Debbie is there to hear it. Debbie! You had me at lasagna. I never said lasagna. Well, I was thinking about it. Mm. Oh, I like so Yay, they're back together. Too bad they eventually break up in iced iced babies for some reason. Likely so Debbie could take a job in New York and meet Cloverfield. Or how they do get together in the Bar Mitzvah episode. And then Debbie dumps him for being immature. But, 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 but Stan learned his lesson and it's the thought that counts. They're so happy together. Steve's right. It's me that's been ugly. Inside. And outside. Seeing Steve happy with Debbie makes Stan rethink his values. Wait, what happened to Veronica? It's like she just disappears in a puff of smoke. And he decides to finally indulge in his appetites. Don't do it, bro. You're a fatty. No! Mm. No! Bro! 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 Goodbye.
Goodbye, Zack, with your stupid D-bag face. You would totally be a presidential candidate or a star in Sausage Party. But wait, could Stan really do this or would his body collapse from the shock? Sorry, I have no idea and once again, I don't want to assume anything. It's just, this is my idea. The family embraces Stan and accepts Stan for who he is while he vows to get better. It's good to be back. Haley, are you wearing makeup? You look like a... <laughs> Baby steps. That's what's most important. Well, this was a pretty heavy episode, but in a way only American Dad can do. It has a great twist, and they do have a lot of body positivity, which I am all here for. The only thing I'm not too fond about, because it's one of my rules, I have to point out at least one mistake per video, is that I wish Klaus got to tell Stan off for what he did, or they saw Klaus. Perhaps when Francine sees Stan's food graveyard, she could also also see Klaus underneath and he could be like Stan's been feeding me all of this food and then he trapped me here so I couldn't tell anybody the chlorine is burning me do you guys pee in this Come on, Stan was using him as a human, well, fish, garbage disposal until Klaus was so big he could not even fit into his bowl. Both of Stan's children and his wife both got the chance to call out their father and tell him to screw his courage to the sticking place. It sucks that Klaus never got that chance. Beyond that, really great episode. Amazing twist, great message. People come in all shapes and sizes, and that's okay. Just be sure you always shower and keep track of your hygiene and we won't have any problems. Remember, help is available, and Happy New Year's, guys. See you in Raleigh. Bye. I'm gonna leave you off with this one quote by Bobby. I'm fat, but big deal. I don't feel bad about it, and just because there are some people in the world who want me to feel bad about it doesn't mean I have to.